Hello and welcome to the Sport for Business Daily. It is Camogie Day today. We've got the launch of the Liberty Insurance All-Ireland Camogie Championship. It all gets started this coming Saturday, coming off the back of a year in 2019, which saw record television audiences, record crowd for a standalone final at Croke Park, and all the figures pointing in the right direction. Are we going to be able to maintain that momentum through into 2020 and its foreshortened season? Well, I'm joined by Sinead McNulty. She's the Arts Johor of the Camogie Association and by Stuart Trotter, the country manager for Ireland of Liberty Insurance, the championship sponsor as well. I'll come to you for Sinead, if I could. That question of momentum coming off the back of what was still a vivid memory of Galway's win in the, uh, you know, in the final last year, uh, record crowd at Crow Park, record number of people watching it. Are we in a position now where we're just going to be able to pick up from there and really hit the ground running on Saturday? Well, thanks, Rob, for first of all, for the opportunity to be here. But um, yeah, for asking a question like that, it is uh, no doubt a challenge to be, you know, se seven months into a global pandemic and um, I suppose looking forward to, to our championship. I think, yeah, we will be building on the momentum that we develop, but we're kind we're going to be doing it in a slightly different way. Obviously, um, our crowds are restricted in the Republic of Ireland currently, and you know, we're watching with bated breath what's happening up in Northern Ireland um right now. There's a, you know, the, the huge numbers have changed things. So we'll be possibly without the spectators, but I think we'll be moving our focus into making sure that people are watching online. And that is through, you know, work with um, our colleagues in RTE, but particularly in thanks to Liberty Insurance, who will be live streaming matches um, for us throughout the championship season uh, this year. So it's, it's we're going to be building on, on that live streaming um, And uh, that was sure. that was a big okay. success last year for you, Stuart. Um, getting a game from each round, so every weekend of All Ireland action, there was going to be a t an opportunity for people to watch, and they did watch in their tens of thousands. Were yeah. you surprised by the success of it last year, or was it something that, you know, looking back on it now, was definitely ahead of its game because obviously it's been well set up for what we're having to do this year. Yeah, no, I mean, I think definitely when we kind of launched this initiative, you know, in, in, in 2019, I mean, effectively making history for, you know, for the sport by kind of enabling broadcasting of the group stages um, through the Facebook page. Um, and we were we were blown away really by the success of it. And uh, I think what's great now is, I mean, I suppose first and foremost, we're just delighted that we're going to have a championship this year. You know, it's really it's fantastic news. Um but I think that the live streaming is now going to be so important as well, because that's where that's where people are going to see the games. Um, and you look, we're just glad that whether we're watching it from our couch or, or, or in the stadium, um, we're glad that the championship is going ahead. But the live streaming is certainly going to be um, a great benefit this year. How much of a challenge, Sinead, has it been getting things in place and getting everything prepared? So many different stakeholders from the counties to... Stuart and the sponsors to the players and teams, all of them willing and wanting to have a championship this year. But obviously, it has been incredibly difficult trying to second guess and third guess the way that the pandemic was developing. But but you've made it there. Um, what are the, what are the key things that you've learned along the way in terms of how to actually adapt at speed? <laughs> Um, well, I suppose there, there's there's a couple of things. Scenario planning definitely is the uh, term of the, the last number of months. So uh, considering all options, including the options you haven't considered um, and having kind of plans in place for them all is key. But I think for us, certainly with the championship, regular engagement with Liberty Insurance has been a key part of it as well and being really honest about what's possible and what the challenges might be. So we're in the really lucky position that we are facing into a championship starting on Saturday. But there were times where, where we weren't sure if that was going to be the case. And it was really about having having open conversations about what the alternatives were, what the options were. Um, I think the key thing around getting everything ready is making sure that our volunteers are briefed and supported 
supported and you know as a staff team we've been working on event planning documents and trying to support our volunteers and I think really learning from the club championship experience is, is key as well because um, our clubs have run really successful competitions some of them to county championship conclusions and some who who got held up a little bit before the final um, when we had to to make a call last weekend but there's been learnings from that that will certainly um guide how we do things in the inter-county. I think working with the GAA and a Ladies Gaelic Football Association as well with the COVID advisory group has been a really important part of that and trying to make sure that we apply the same um, ethos regardless of the association to running the county championships and making sure that we've an agreed way of doing things and an agreed platform. So yeah, they've been some of the things we've we've used to benefit it from. But listen, every day is a school day is what, what <laughs> I've learned in the last while. And uh, you know, every email you get is another question that you mightn't have thought of. And um, you know, you have to fi figure out the answers sometimes within a fairly short timeline. So being being able to pick up the phone to people has been really important. That cooperation across Camogie ladies football and the GA has been very noticeable at club level in particular because there was a real danger if that hadn't taken place of you know your your daughters being told one thing and your sons being told another whereas the level of consistency meant that all of the engagements across the club were were, were very important. Um, the the sort of the the challenges that have been that have been coming out. I know you mentioned about Northern Ireland and waiting for that. We've obviously got, uh, you know, an Ireland of Ireland championship to take place. It looks though, am I right in thinking that the, uh, you know, that the map is that there might be a, a universal uh, application so that it will either be that there will be a limited number of fans allowed in everywhere or that, it, that everything will be behind closed doors again for consistency. Yeah, I think that's been an important part from, from the Gaelic Games family throughout every document we've issued. We've been aiming for it to be a 32 county document and that all of the guidance that we give where, where possible um, are applicable to every county across the island. Now, sometimes there is a different, um, obviously the spectators have been a, a sort of an obvious one over the last little while um, that has been different between the two jurisdictions. But I think it's important for, for our members that we're, we're giving the same message insofar as is possible so people are operating from the same baseline the same team numbers are allowed to participate and really the only question has been the spectators so we'll we'll be watching this space i think there are some public health officials that will be keen to see that level of consistency applied in a wider context but if we can do it in sport then anything is possible if i can come back to the streaming for a, for a short while you mentioned there about the success of the club championships and it was something that really did seem to take off. I know I was involved in a couple of the, the matches towards the the, uh, the end of the, the Dublin Camogie Championship, even turning my hand to commentary on a couple of occasions. But the technology was such that we were able to actually switch it on with relative ease. And none of that would have been possible had it not been for last year. And for that, you know, sort of, as we say, it was groundbreaking at, at the time. The... The numbers that you're looking to bring through, Stuart, and bringing them through and showing it on the, uh, you know, the, the Liberty Insurance Facebook page, from a pure marketing point of view, how important is that so that you're actually bringing tens of thousands of fans into your house to actually watch the championships being played out? Yeah, well, I mean, of course, it's, I mean, it, it was really important to us in 2019, but, you know, as I said earlier, this year, it's, 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 it's even more important, um, you know, given, I mean, it's, it's, it's been an incredibly challenging year um, from kind of a, from a marketing point of view, from a sponsorship and branding point of view um, for, for all businesses and insurance is no different. Um, but I think that this really gives us a fantastic opportunity um, to, to kind of really leverage this kind of sponsorship opportunity. So, um, you know, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's just going to be so important. Um, and we're just delighted that we, we, we have it in place. And this is your eighth, ninth year, 2013? Yeah, so 2013, uh, yeah. 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 And obviously this is a, a different year than any other. I always liked the image of uh, Liberty in your logo, looking like a uh, camogie player reaching up to grab a ball down from the clouds. Um, but this year we will we'll be able to see it all in the, uh, you know, in, in, in the screen, the smaller screen. The, the intensity of the championships is going to be even keener this year. So everybody will be going into it off the back of 
limited preparation. It'll be nine weeks from the first ball being thrown in to the raising of the of the, the cup in uh, in Croke Park. How difficult is that going to be from your point of view as a sponsor in terms of making sure that you can activate and get your message out there in that shorter window? Well, I mean, I think in, in, in some ways, um, I think this year, because people are so so hungry for some some sporting you know, activity on television and are on and, you know, through through our live streaming that, um, you know, we're pretty confident that it's not going to be that difficult in, 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 in a way. You know, I think there's such a demand out there. Um, and I mean, it's 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 a sense of escaping in a way from maybe some of the some of the harsher realities of 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 COVID and you know from the lockdown that everyone is going through. Um, so I think it's really it's got such a really positive thing for people to have something like this to look forward to. We did research in a number of different waves over the course of the summer with uh, with Onside, the sports impact monitor that we did. And one of the key things that came out of that was how people were giving additional credit to sponsors that have stuck by the sport. So congratulations and, uh, and thank you for, for doing that. Um, Sinead, just before I let you go, and I hate to ask the question, but contingencies for the championship should things not quite work out as we hope should teams go down or should indeed the championship go down is it possible that we might see uh, the 2020 championship played out in the early stages of 2021 or are you keeping those contingency plans in a in a locked box with only break in case of emergency yeah, I think it's the latter. Um, you know, uh, in an ideal world, we'll complete our championship in 2020. That's what we want to do. It will be absolutely an intense period of time for the players, and no doubt it'll throw up surprises. Um, you know, th throughout the, the the nine weeks before 12th of December, but we're keen to we're keen to try and finish in 2020 if we can. I mean, never say never. Again, what what have we learned for the last seven months? Y you have to keep keep something in the back of the mind. But um, I think we have enough plans in place to be able to to work through anything that that happens. You know, again, things like testing, um, rapid testing for the players. We're joining with the GEA on that programme. So that will enable games to to proceed as planned. And um, listen, you can't you just can't predict what's what's going to happen with each individual team um, as we go through. And the bottom line is making sure that everyone is safe and well. Uh, throughout the championship um, that's obviously the, the key uh, both in our players and, and also with our volunteers so um, we will we will do everything within our power to make sure everything uh, concludes effectively and efficiently on the, the uh, 12th of December so um, you know and again listen we're, we're working with fantastic partners in Liberty Insurance who are always there uh, to give advice in in times of uh, in times of crisis to, to us and to their own customers as well so uh, it's um, you know we've we've got uh, good shoulders to lean on when we need to as well. I guess an insurance company is the best possible partner to have when it comes to different contingencies that, that might arise. Well, you will finish, hopefully, with a bang in uh, in December, the December the 12th. It's going to be under floodlights as well in Crow Park, which it probably would be regardless of the time. But it's a 7 p.m. throw-in scheduled now. It will, of course, be live on RTE. And hopefully, in prime time on a Saturday night, it will lead to record figures again. So uh, the very best of luck to you both in terms of completing the championship. Uh, once step at a time we'll get the first games underway this saturday afternoon october the 17th uh, i'll be keeping an eye out on all island champion galway at home to dublin but plenty more games besides as well so for the moment anyway thanks very much to Sinead mcnulty from camogie association and to Stuart trotter from liberty insurance